Welcome back everybody to our studies in land law. In the previous lesson, what we did was spend some time talking about the concept of the easement. We focused a lot of our time specifically on what an easement fundamentally is and how it is defined in the case law specifically and pertinently within the case of uh, Rielumbra Park. This lesson is going to spend some time talking about the acquisition of an easement. Now, we're not going to examine all of the modes and methods of acquisition in this lesson because we will get to some of the other ones in, in, in future lessons time. But fundamentally, what we're going to do is spend a little bit of time talking about the concept of easement acquisition and then secondly, focus on the first type of easement acquisition, which is known as expressed acquisition. So as I've just mentioned, the previous lesson looked what an easement was uh, and then talked about what is required for the creation of an easement, citing the leading authority in this area, which is the case of Rhea Lumbra Park. This lesson is now going to turn to looking at the process of determining the acquisition of easements within the law. So easement acquisition is something that can be achieved through one of three main methods. The first is the one that we're going to spend some time focusing on in this lesson specifically, talking about the concept of an express acquisition of an easement. The second is known as implied acquisition of an easement and involves something that we'll talk about in a future lessons time. And then finally, we'll spend a couple of lessons, in fact, talking about the concept of prescription of an easement, something that is a little bit complicated and has some has some complex elements to it. It's not too bad in the uh, overall, but it is it has some elements that um, might be a little bit tricky for some people to, to get their head around. Um, so we'll spend some time looking at that finally, and then we will get to looking at the termination of an easement uh, and some other uh, elements that can be um, spoken about with regard to easements. We also have this final one that is sort of attached to the end when we talk about acquisition of easements, which is the, the fact that some easements can be granted by way of statute. And um, the reason why I'm not going to spend that much time, if any time really at all, talking about the acquisition of an easement through statute is mainly just because it's relatively straightforward. It's not particularly difficult to understand the process by which a statute can grant easements. So let's begin first then. Express acquisition. This is the simplest process by which an easement can be granted, other than, of course, through statute. Of the three that we have spoken about, that we're speaking about, should I say, uh, this will be the simplest of those three. Um, and essentially what is required is that a document exists which grants or reserves the right for a party to have an easement potentially within a particular transaction or through the, the the acquisition of property deeds and all these different kinds of things. And that's simply it. That's simply the beginning and ending of how an acquisition can take place from an easement. But what it says here as well is two things. It says here that a document may exist which grants or reserves the right for a party to have an easement. So it's not just talking about the granting of an easement in law, but we're also thinking about this idea of a reservation of an easement. What does this mean? What do we mean when we talk about granting? Well, we, the granting of the right, fundamentally. Um, but what about the reserving of the right for a party to have an easement? Well, express reservation occurs when the vendor of a property decides to sell part of their land but they want to reserve an easement over that land that has been sold so it is not really the acquisition of an easement by way of it being granted to you as in if there's some document that, which exists which gives you property rights or whatever which then also as part of the existence of that property right may also give you right to access through a way of an easement but it's different. It's a sense of if you have a property and you want to sell part of your land, but you want to ensure that you still have certain amounts of rights, uh, maybe for access, for example, over that land, then you might decide to, in the process of selling this property, opt to reserve an easement over the land that has been sold. 
And what this means is you will be selling the land, you will be selling uh, and conveyancing that property, you'll be selling the fee simple, um, but you may still wish to remain and retain a certain right that is held over that land by sale of the easement. Now, this is something that can be done expressly, and so um, we see this uh, done through the sale of property um, per se. So if there is a uh, an agreement that is put in place on the sale of a property, you will have uh, various different terms in that agreement, including, for example, and not limited to um, things relating to the price of that property, the, the point of sale, and all these different kinds of things. Um, uh, if it's a mortgage that's being set up, you obviously have to do deals and, and, and have conversations with the bank that you are more. Uh, setting up your mortgage with but then there might also be terms relating to this particular element here the idea that we want to have a term that is expressly stated within the agreement that we reserve the right to have an easement over the property for, for which we can actually enjoy some enjoyment of maybe our property for example um, and Generally speaking, it me it's something that is unlikely to be implied through the courts, and so as a result of which, the concept of the easement reservation is one which is almost entirely, um, or at least mostly, uh, done and mostly occurs through the express um, uh, acquisition of property or the express uh, reservation of an easement. So, as a result of this, and to sort of to conclude this broader conversation, where there is a sale or transfer of either a leasehold or maybe even a freehold estate, the deed must include an express reservation for an easement on the part of the vendor, if that vendor obviously chooses to um, wish to have and maintain a certain amount of rights of access or whatever the, the particular easement is for over their property, over that property specifically. So if there is the desire on the part of the vendor to actually have an easement, they must make that very clear in the deeds for an express reservation.